Hello, everybody, and welcome to another tutorial by for Layla Quantum Tech. Uh, this tutorial is on how to use Layla Blocks Part Two. I'm your host, Kay Elmer of the Tinkers Academy, and I'm here with Philip Samor von Holzendorf, the owner operator of Layla Q. Hi, Philip. How are you doing today? Hey, Kay. I'm doing great. Looking forward to a nice weekend, and really looking forward now to this part two. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I got a lot of great feedback on part one, uh, really happy that there's actually was a time span between the two because I was able to grab some additional questions and follow on thoughts uh, of part one that we're going to bake right into part two. So let's jump right in uh, with our disclaimer here. Uh, Neither Layla Quantum Tech nor the Tinkers Academy recommend or endorse any specific tests, physicians, procedures, opinions, or other information that may be mentioned in this video. Reliance on any information appearing and discussed in this video solely at everyone's own risk. Statements made have not been evaluated by the EFSA or the FDA or any governmental derivatives thereof. Layla Quantum Tech products and products that Layla Quantum Tech may represent are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Thank you. So now um, we're in part two and where we left off were in part one, uh, where we talked about what are the timings and, and the quirks about charging objects. And we talked about the same as it relates to charging people, pets, plants, and places, uh, especially we had a lot of follow-up questions about using photos, and we'll get to that. But the next thing that we uh, we kind of uh, wanted to touch on here was charging water and food. So that was the next bunch of questions that came out, Philip, uh, after we released part one, which was like, what are the timings uh, for doing for charging those things because you know that's one of the biggest things that people want to charge right so if we could just kind of get some of those timings and then as we go along if you could talk about you know if anything comes to mind about you know the differences because we you know like when when it comes to water there's distinctly a difference between you know like i want to just charge a glass or a bottle or i want to charge an entire tank you know people have these you know rso tanks of water people have water outside and big tanks and things like that so uh, if we could, you want to just jump right in and start talking about um, if I had a Q block, right? This is how this uh, matrix works. Uh, what? How long do I got to take? Uh, you know, how long would it take to charge a glass or a bottle in a Q block versus an I block? And is there a maximum? Because there's always that concept of, you know, what happens if I overcharge? So let's. If you want to just start charging, like how long would it take if I just had a glass of water or like a water bottle and I put it in in uh, in a Q block? Yes, so all great questions, of course, and um, there's there's always a range and there's always a caveat also to that because as we went along, we found out some interesting things and I'll get to that. So with water um, in the uh, quantum block, certainly if you just put it in for 30, 45 seconds, you already got a good charge. It seems that you can optimize it uh, if you go three minutes, um, we we didn't have the Emoto Institute test two minutes and four minutes. It was just based on our own observation that we figured three minutes may be, you know, really the right timing for the quantum block. And the Emoto Institute tested that, and you know, they they were so impressed that they're now um, wanting to actually bring these products to Japan. That's how they impressed they've been because within only three minutes, the quantum block was able to so positively influence the water like they haven't seen before in such a time frame. So for the infinity block, that will be uh, one minute. Optimize in one minute? Or... Yeah, so you know, I would say here with, a, with the infinity block, uh, the 30 seconds would be the, let's say, 15 seconds, right? So within 15 seconds, you already got a charge in it, right? I mean, if you're just on the go and you, you're really in a rush, but you still want to get some charge in, 15 seconds uh, is fine for that. And then to uh, to really optimize, go to uh, up to a minute and a half. We, yeah. So that's what we, yeah, up to a minute and a half. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, is there a concern about overcharging water? No, I don't see I don't see a concern, um, but I would not do it, frankly. I, you know, I mean, if you go just with Infinity Block, you go for two minutes, three minutes. I don't think there will be any uh, 
any effect, but if you leave it in maybe for 15 minutes, we don't know if it, maybe the, the water actually um, gets overcharged in a way that it, it, it is not, it's never gonna get worse the water than it was before, frankly. But you may not have the optimal uh, effect. That's just something, you know, based on our observation, what we would say. Okay. Um, so I'm just trying to, is like, okay, how about this, you know, from a maximum standpoint, you know, from overcharging, when you look at like these types of things like water, drinks, food supplements, and well, I think medicine will leave separately, but you know, is there, is there a concept? Like, could I overcharge? Like, uh, you know, I put in some vitamins or I put in, you know, like I'm eating a salad and, and, you know, is there, is, is there any, first of all, you know, is there a concern about overcharging? Like I put it in there and I forget and I come back an hour later and is, is the food still fine? And is it, you know, is, has there been yeah. anything at all? Cause I don't, you know, I personally don't think that there's anything wrong with overcharging, uh, other than medicine. Um, and uh, you know, you can't, you can't hurt yourself, right? It's like that other conversation we had earlier where you can't hurt yourself with QE. Um, no, 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 you can't de definitely not. Yeah. So that's never a concern really. Um, with overcharging is uh, definitely something to watch with metals and with, with medicine. So those two just always keep in mind, uh, don't do that, um, uh, please. And with, with food, we recommend a certain times, but we've been, you know, finding out about food allergies, right? And so when we look at this, the tests that that uh, Todd Shipman and, and others have done and repeated over and over again, you know, you can find it on our YouTube channel, actually. So he charged the foods that he's allergic to for six to seven minutes in the infinity block, which is way over what we usually recommend. However, he's been successful in not having any allergic reactions whatsoever than to those foods. Again, disclaimer, we don't recommend you do that. Don't try it if, you know, just take your own risk. You can try it yeah, if okay. it's on your own risk, not at our risk. <laughs> um, but uh, so there is definitely a range. And I don't think at all, like if you charge raspberries, even for 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know, you're not going to have a negative effect. It can happen with certain fruits like pineapple and possibly others that they ripen suddenly and then you may not enjoy them anymore so that's a possibility more research needs to be done yeah. but it's yeah nothing really that uh <laughs> yeah where you need to worry about yeah okay so i'm just going to kind of just say like something like this i'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to say it uh, so bottom line is like, hey, char charging longer than the above, which are these numbers, is not necessary, but because because results are unknown, so proceed with caution. Uh, you might yeah, you might affect the flavor, might yes. affect flavor, and et cetera. We just don't know. Um, you're right. We just you just don't know because you haven't. You know, nobody's got time to test every single thing in the world. Okay, so that's I think that's a good little disclaimer to put on this page. Because uh, folks are, are, you know, basically screenshotting these guys. Okay, so if you just want to use it the way that we know it works really well, it's, hey, put the water glass in there, three minutes, you're done, 90 seconds in the eye block, and you're good. Now, if it's a tank, I know that you were you were answering questions earlier in the week, but I believe that was about using capsules and tanks. But if I had a Q block, I guess I would have to separate the plates, but... You know, typical RSO under under cabinet is like a gallon. So let's just say one gallon uh, as we need some kind of standards. Like if, for one gallon, how long, how long, how long are you, are you thinking? Is it the same as if it was a glass, you know, like, uh, like a, a body or would it be longer because there's more, more water? Yep. So first of all, real quick, I want to mention and refer to that, you know, because after that, answer I gave with a capsule, I realized I probably should have provided a little bit more content because you can't really use the the capsule just as is to charge um, any dense objects. You would have to use um, an intention with it. It, ha it. it doesn't work otherwise. And it doesn't also charge like a quantum block or infinity block does. It's, it's right. just completely different. And I want to just make that point clear with anything water 
orange juice, tea, and even uh, certain fruits that are very water heavy, you can certainly use the, um, the, the, the capsule because it is very easy to charge water. So now coming back to this question here, if you charge a gallon with a quantum block, yes, it, it does not matter. It's the very same thing as in with a glass because for the energy in the blocks, it doesn't matter whether you fill up the whole space in the block in between or just a tiny space. It, it penetrates everything at the same time and the same speed. Hmm. If, so if you have the okay. same type of matter, you know, it, it is okay. it's been different. If you put a concrete block in there, that's different than water. Oh, you know what I mean? But you water, could still put a whole yeah. concrete block in and, and could it take a little, tiny okay. little piece of it, it right. would take the same time. I get it. Okay, so there's something really interesting about QE because water reacts differently than uh, hard physical matter, right? So, and then, and it's the same approach as to human being and our bodies, because we're literally mostly water. So we act like water. So that's why you could put your hand in the block and you get your whole body charged. So that's the same thing. If I put, if I put, uh, uh, you know, part of the tank between the plates, I'm charging the whole tank of water, right? Because water works like people um, in their bodies. Is that correct? Yeah, you're pretty much right. I, you know, I, I would if, if yeah. I mean that that pretty much would happen. I what always would, would try to put everything in with. If you put a hand in there, it's partially a big, big because of water, but it's really because of the cells that um, okay. and their quantum fields within the cells that oh, yeah. communicate. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, we're charged beings. Okay, all right. Okay, so there is a little bit of a difference. So, the, so let me let me put it this way. You have lots of folks with gardens. Uh, and so we've had questions with people saying, uh, how do I charge like a 50-gallon rain barrel? And then you've had people say, well, I want to charge like if I put uh, the my hose and the hose, you know, 50-foot hose. But if I put the uh, if I put the quantum block at the point where the faucet is so that the water running through the hose you know, there's this little eight inch section of the of the hose that's going to go that's in the Q block. So as the water's going through the hose and eight inches of, of it, it's going to pass through the Q block right on, on its way to mm -hmm. the garden in that little eight inches where it's it, where the hose passes through the Q block, even though the water's moving really quickly, would it charge the water? Yes, it would charge the water, but it wouldn't wouldn't have the same effect as okay. if you were to charge it for a longer period of time. If okay. that makes sense. Right. You could, you know, the Emoto Institute would, would probably be able to visualize it even, but it wouldn't show uh, as many beautiful crystals as it would if you charged it for, you know, two, three minutes. Okay. All right. So that's important. Um, so, yeah, because, okay, that applies to folks with uh, gas you know, H2, HHO generators passing gas through a Q block. Mm -hmm. It's not sitting in there long enough. I guess gas is a separate thing. We'll cover that later. Okay, so uh, rain barrel. If I were to take the plates apart and I put a plate on each side of my 50-gallon rain barrel, uh, would I have to move the plates around or just charging a section of that barrel charges the whole thing? I think it would be fine like that. You know, again, you could... Uh, you could do that with moving the plates, but I don't think you need to because water is indeed so interconnected. Mm -hmm. And uh, by charging the a majority of it, it will basically radiate and transmit outwards to to then cover the whole barrel. Okay. 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 So that's really important. So those are the the main things about charging water is charge it for a you know for this length of time so just passing water through a block quickly you're not going to get the optimal effect so if you're watering your garden or what you know charging drinking water make sure it sits in the block field right for this length of time if you want to get the benefits from it okay all right and so um okay okay that's important so this so uh side note for folks with inhalation generators um, I don't know. We'll have to have a separate discussion about how in the world would you charge gas, but that's not going to, that's not like your mainstream <laughs> tutorial issue here. Okay. So now, drinks. by the way, so we need to correct our website because on this one link that you can go to with more details in regards to um, charging food, 
we actually say for the quantum block um, that three minute would be the maximum. And really we can't say it that way anymore. We were more on the side of caution uh, at the time we wrote that because that's what our tests had, had shown, you know, to for the optimal levels. But again, I mentioned these allerg allergy tests where even people had their foods in there for six, seven minutes in the infinity box. So I just, again, want to mention not that people then come with a question, well, but you wrote this on the website. If it's still there on the website, when the video is up, then uh, let us know. We'll have to correct it. We'll try to do that next week. <laughs> okay. okay. No, good to know. Uh, so is, is charging drinks like a soda, tea, coffee, hot cocoa, is it the same as drinking, you know, charging water? Is there any difference yeah. because there's stuff in it? No, I would say it's exactly the same. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so drinks and water are in the same category. How about food? Is it in the same category as water? Um, yeah, I would say it's a, it's it's very similar. You, I think for the optimization, I would use the exact same time frames and you know, again, the, the maximum could be greater definitely than those three minutes and 90 seconds. Uh, I don't, I, I don't really know. We don't know if, if there is indeed a difference. Um, and it may also be a person and allergy related, right? Maybe a taught shipment needs to charge it for six, seven minutes and then finish block, maybe someone else eight minutes. And again, someone else may be just one minute. It's just something we don't know yet. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so pretty much all of this is kind of the same timing. Um, and there's a lot we don't know. So if I want to charge my, my dinner before I eat it, then, you know, optimal three minutes in a Q block, 90 seconds in an I block. If I, if I'm trying to change the food, right, uh, at a frequency level, and I want to make sure that like I'm worried about pesticides or I'm worried about whatever, you know, uh, or allergens, right? Then I would want to leave it in there. And you want to experiment, I guess, because everybody's different and all the foods are different. So like your example that you had at the biohacking conference, you were saying that it took him, let's say, six to seven minutes before what he would eat no longer affected him negatively. So that's well, something he didn't, that, he right? didn't try it with only two. Oh, that was just like the one shot. Time. That's what happened. Okay. So that's yeah, something. because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. already quite an experiment to do that. And he certainly didn't want to have allergic reactions because then it's painful for him. And he tried that multiple right. times at home. And his first attempt was, I think, six, seven minutes, and then it worked. And then he just kept doing it that way. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to. Yeah. How much do people want to experiment with their allergy reactions? Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm going to actually experiment with this myself because I'm allergic to MSG and I've been off C60 for a while because I moved. Right. <laughs> so I recently had it. I had a, like a reaction to some food I ate. Uh, so now I can kind of, I'm going to, I can, I can kind of figure out what, like how long it'll take, but okay. So all we know, the only data point we have, you know, with allergen uh, is, is, uh, you know, one guy did it and he figured it, you know, just on his first try, boom, he hit it and <laughs> you don't want to mess with it. So that's what he's sticking with. Uh, but yeah, so you want, that's for everybody else out there too. If you're, if you're charging with the purpose of, of mitigating our allergens, um, you know, you're experimenting, uh, and, uh, you'll, and you're going to find that number. And if you find that number, like how long it worked for you, please share it with the rest of us so that, you know, we're all yes. going to learn this together. Uh, okay, cool. So now with supplements, um, uh, you know, folks want to charge their, you know, their daily multivitamin and whatever else. Uh, is it any different? I mean, because in my mind, um, you know, uh, it's kind of like borderline. I don't I, you know, it's, is it is, you know, ph pharmaceuticals. I know there's a consideration about pharmaceuticals, but supplements themselves, like, is there any kind of like, like, what's the timing to charge a supplement? Is there a concern? I would be more cautious yeah. with supplements because they're, you know, um, very concentrated. And I would say 30 to 60 seconds in the quantum block is totally fine. That's what I do. And I found that to be great. And that's also what we tested with Roman in multiple tests. And it worked very, very well. Okay. So that's what we recommend. And yeah. with the infinity block, you know, I would be between... 15 seconds to, you know, maybe uh, 
yeah, call it 30, you know. Okay. Okay. And then, then you can take the supplement. Okay. So then let's talk about medicine because medicine is tricky, right? Because it's a chemical and QE, based on the allergen discussion we just had, we know that QE mitigates toxins. <laughs> So medicine is kind of toxins. I mean, you know, it's like medicine is a toxin. So what do you, what do you say about that? Like, I like, you know, should we even bother? That's my first question. Like, Hey, you know, I'm, I, you know, you got someone who's got high blood pressure, they take statins or you got someone's got a headache and they're like, Oh, if I charge my, you know, my aspirin, it'll make it better. I mean, do we even want to go there? First question. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, be because it's 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 part of life in, in some ways, right? It's hopefully not part of many people's lives and not on a general basis, but certainly there are conditions and situations also where you may have to grab something like that. And and frankly, I'm also thankful, you know, that something like ibuprofen, which is certainly also toxic, but that that you can take that, you know, if, if you break your leg, you know, you're I don't know, walk across the street and you get hit by a car, what are you going to do? Um, so I think, and then if you can have a cleaner product, it's helpful. So okay. you need to be careful though with that because, you know, charging times is important. I would not do that in an infinity block. I think with things like um, aspirin and ibuprofen, you'd be fine if you only have an uh, infinity block and you, you know, charge it for 10 seconds and no more, you know, I would personally do that, you know, again, that's, that's up to you. I'm, I'd be okay doing that, but I would not take anything that's for a specific condition. You know, if you're taking something for blood pressure or any of those things, do not experiment with the infinity block because the infinity block works so fast. It's so powerful that it adds homeopathic levels to the actual substance. And, you cannot say for what substance, how many levels are added and, and how deep it can get really, really high, really quickly. And the higher the potency, the, you know, the more effect you'll have from that. So we just straight out say, just don't do that. You know, that'd be our recommendation. And with the quantum block, I'd be uh, doing the same thing here. I would probably do, you know, 30 to 45 seconds we say no more than 60 seconds so yeah that's that's what 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 i would do I mean, really you 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 should be done i mean it's totally fine after 30 to 45 seconds in a quantum block and uh, there's there's no more needed in order to you know what you're doing is you're you're neutralizing and harmonizing frequencies that are potentially harmful well, what you don't want to do is, you know, Im impact how the actual substance works. You know what I mean? You still want to have those right. effects the same. Just just use a cleaner product, and okay. maybe maybe better afterwards. Frankly, okay, okay. So um, now you know you know you know the members as well as I do. They're going to go, yeah, but I only have an eye block. <laughs> So, yeah, then then you so need to I, listen to what I just said two minutes yeah. ago. Don't <laughs> use it if you have an ibuprofen or aspirin or something you know very very simple like that uh, at your own risk. You know, do the ten seconds. I don't think there's any harm with that, uh, frankly. But but again, don't don't okay. don't use it. So the official the official other. position of Layla Q is don't use your IB for drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for you guys yeah. to own, you know, this, this remember now, this is the tutorial uh, and this is our, this is guidance. Um, and these are guidelines based on, on what is known and what people are, you know, the, you know, Layla, Layla is comfortable uh, recommending. Uh, and because there's just so much that uh, is not known, uh, you know. So, yeah, keep that in mind and, uh, you know, and proceed from there. So, okay. So and then also. Yeah, go ahead. So, so people can make quantum frequency medicine also, and that that's that's an interesting. That's the reverse side of it, right? You can take, uh, let's say, an, an ibuprofen and put it into the quantum block, and and then charge the the frequency onto you know a metal object, uh, for example, that would be recommended, a silver coin or whatever you want to use, and then you have that frequency, and it can support um, the physical substance if you if you then need to take that. Uh, or it can even uh, substitute it um, completely. No, not to a hundred percent, but you know, if 
let's say you you're on the edge of just taking an ibuprofen you have a headache but it's not really bad you may get along with just the frequency that's the idea right. and then you know we may have times uh, at, at some point where it's going to be very hard possibly to get certain medications that that you need so so having that um, available uh, on a frequency basis maybe even doing some 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 tests with that may come in quite handy so that's what that is for but we do only recommend the quantum block for that okay you know that's a very very good point um, as you know, uh, one of my hobby is bioelectrical magnetics. And so I'm very aware of practitioners who are using resonant frequencies, charging water, and then uh, using the water with the frequency of this of the substance as the medicine itself. And it works. Uh, you know, there are reports there are that they work. Uh, case in point, the molecular frequency for ibuprofen was uh, transmitted to a glass of water. The person had a headache. They drank the water um, and their headache went away as if they took the ibuprofen. So that's what Philip yeah. just mentioned. So um, if you have an eye block and it, the recommendation is to not put the actual medicine in the block, you can copy the frequency of the medicine to a piece of foil use that piece of foil to then copy the frequency onto a glass of water, drink the water. So that's something you could try, all right? As, as an, as yes, opposed but to still just with an eye yeah. block, we do not recommend that with any like normal drugs for any conditions. We right. do not recommend that because right. again, homeopathic levels are added and we, right. we just don't know how quickly and to what extent which, with which substance. So that's yeah. why caution with the eye block with these things okay very okay because it could get too strong it could get too weak you know and it's medicine so you don't want to be messing around with that okay good point uh yeah we're gonna get a lot of questions about that still uh, but i think that that's pretty clear right now just understand if you're listening to this that there's just not enough known about what could happen and the concern is is that you don't get what you need because it's obviously been prescribed to you and you need it uh so you know we'll go from there Okay, so uh, more stuff about charging. Um, so we did have, these are the follow-on questions. We had some questions about, um, you know, when we talked about using photos. So when we were talking about right here, uh, you know, photos, uh, you know, what are the time frames? But the question that came out, which was, is like, hey, you know, what happens if, and here's that, you know, the thing that you'd mentioned a long time ago about, you know, is it, uh, you know, the photo itself. So the, the, we had a question this week about, uh, you had mentioned that you had uh, kind of helped yourself uh, by taking a picture of your of your upper body from the top down and then putting that in your block to kind of help alleviate your neck pain from sleeping poorly. Uh, and so the questions that popped right up after that, which was, well, did, was it a photo of your of your on your cell phone and you put your cell phone in there as the photo? And the answer was, is no, you print everything, which is what I do too. I also print all my photos. I don't use my cell phone as the digital, you know, digital, digital representation of the photo. I actually print it onto photo paper and put the picture, the photo paper in the block. So, uh, so that's that question, right? Uh, cause you answered that. Yeah. I, I think this morning. So now the other question though, was about more than one person in a photo. So could you talk about that? <clears throat> like, is it, is it like, uh, is it something that people should avoid um and what's the worst that could happen you know that sort of thing like two people uh in the same block at the same time or a person holding their pet you know how it is right or people standing in a mm -hmm. crowd i mean how important is it to not have any other living beings <laughs> in the photo when you're trying to use a photo uh to send quantum energy to that person it is important because you don't want to commingle these energies and that is exactly what is happening uh, if you put two people uh, or an animal and a, and, and a person in there at the same time. Um, there are exceptions. So if, you know, husband and wife, for example, if they both agree, they can absolutely go in together because then even certain topics and stories in between the two um and maybe issues underlying issues may be looked at and and possibly even transformed right so those are certain things that that can happen can they can have a positive uh, effect um <laughs> possibly right and then that's okay usually with the family even it you know if if you have 
two kids, you know, husband, wife, and, and they're all pretty much in agreement, then, then that is also a possibility because they're already so close and they've all agreed. But other than that, we recommend to never do that. Okay. Good point. Um, okay. So, you know, unless you like, you want to have like a, I don't know if you have a dog and you want to have suddenly an even deeper connection with the dog in a way uh, you could, you could try what you did accidentally at some point yeah. where you had your dogs there in there with your photo and yeah. Hey, you know, why, why, why not? Um, but, but in general, you know, we, 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 we don't recommend do that. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense because when you live with someone, you're already connected to them because your biofield extends out about six feet. So you're already commingling energy, right? And uh, your frequency in theirs, and you're always close to them. And, uh, yes. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, you there, are, there are surfaces out there where, you know, energies are indeed commingled on a, yeah. on a le level that is unheard of. And, and it's almost ridiculous, frankly, because if you end up having, you know, 50, 60 different people, animals, objects, all in at the same time, and you're literally putting them in one energetic soup and stirring them the whole time, it's, it is, it is crazy. It is abs on an energetic level. That is an absolute no go. It is terrible. It is, it is not helpful at all. And it is, it's something that should never be done. We've actually worked since probably four months to figure out that problem and we've solved it frankly so there's there's going to be more coming out in regards to that in the next couple of months but um yeah so just be mindful of that you know you, okay. you just want to have one one living being in there um that you know of and uh, you know if you want to be in there with your wife or spouse together you know just uh just ask her okay so important uh so best practices uh a picture on a, on a photo paper uh, one person at a time. Um, now, would it be now the picture that you know, we got questions about? What, what kind of a picture uh, does it need to be? Their full body, or could it be like their upper body and their uh, and their face? You know, it yeah. could be a body part. Like I like like let's say my sister hurt her knee and she took a picture of her knee. You know, would I need a picture of her instead of her her knee, or could I put that picture yeah. of her knee and use that? Yep. So first of all, I think uh, it, any paper is fine, by the way. So you need to just use regular printing paper. That's what I do. Okay. Um, if, if if you're more concerned about that, you can certainly take photo paper, but it, it's from my perspective, not necessary. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you want to, you know, give yourself a nice charge or someone else, then try to have a full body picture or where as much of the, the body is, um, is on the picture. That's what I would recommend. Now, the situation I had yesterday with with this heavy migraine and neck pain, which I usually never have, it was very unusual. Um, and because we've tested that before, it's this knee thing that you just recommended. And that's how I did it also. I just took a picture of that part and not my whole body. And so it, the energy focused on that. And the same with the knee. So if you hurt your knee and, and that's all you wanna work on, then then that's totally enough you just okay. need a picture of that knee uh if you can't do it you know uh, physically okay because that was the other question too was like somebody asked if they could put a picture of a person uh that was like from behind you know and i wasn't sure i'm like how would the world how would you know how would the universe know that that's that person if you can't see their face but you're saying that uh, you know that's like that's fine you know that is that person so it doesn't need to be their face uh, a full body's better, but a part can be fine, which is either, you know, a picture of them walking away from you or a picture of a part of them. But, you know, the whole idea is that's fine. Uh, and, of course, putting in an intention to help them heal. Uh, and I think that's what drives the whole process anyway, right? That is true. However, like when I want to really charge my whole system, I would personally, that's what my intuition say, uh, take a picture from the front where the eyes are on as well yeah i'm um, not sure why that is but i i, I do feel that if you okay yeah it, it, that may have a greater effect for the overall system yeah, uh, if you just want to charge your back of course just take a picture of your back uh, no need at all for okay for the eyes or the face so optimal get a picture of the person <laughs> with the facing you uh, that's optimal that's okay and then lastly was the question about putting a picture does it have to be a recent picture 
Uh, and I know that we have that really interesting testimonial uh, from one of our members who uh, worked to heal, uh, I believe, their child through trauma. And they put their child, a picture of their child at different ages. You know, they're an adult, an adult at this point, but they put a picture of their child uh, at a younger age, then, when, you know, a little older, a little older, you know, that how that has. And that at each stage, right, they were helping send energy to that child of, you know, that that person of them at that time, you know, kind of thing. And and it, and it seemed to have worked, you know, it seemed to have helped uh, their adult child overcome childhood traumas. Um, and so that kind of begs to the question of is, you know, I, is it a picture of me now or is it a picture of me 20 years ago? Does it matter or how much do you know about that? I mean, is it all experimental at this yes. point? It's great questions and we know quite a bit about it because we've heard multiple reports and then also did some testing on our own. So if you want to charge yourself or help someone today uh, with something that's going on now, then always take a most recent picture and you know this doesn't you know you don't have to like take a new picture every day right that that's not what that means you can still use a picture if it's two three weeks old but however the more current the better for sure um and you know if, if i heard myself today let's say now then in an hour i want to uh, charge myself fully and i want to have all this uh included in an optimal way i would take a new picture frankly that's what i oh, would do okay. but we have found out that indeed uh, childhood traumata and you know other blockages and, and experiences can be eased harmonized uh, and transformed even by putting in pictures of the child at the time let's say between the ages of four and six certain difficult things happened because maybe the parents died um something else happened a kid got into an accident when i was six like all that in, in just two years then you would um find pictures of the four-year-old the five-year-old the six-year-old and, and work your way through uh, from the four-year-old to the six-year-old put those pictures in and then things that happened at the time um, we'll see, you know, I almost said healing. We don't want to say healing, right? But it's, uh, it, it would say, it would see a transformation and, uh, um, and a an harmonization of what had happened, a release of the traumata. That's, that's what, right. uh, has been shown in multiple tests. So that's amazing. You know, and that yeah, really so I've done it with myself actually also yeah. just to right. test it on myself. And, and it's interesting. It's, wow. it's, it's a very interesting wow. thing to do. Okay. I just found an old, um, you know, um, my mother had made a book at some point with, with pictures throughout my life until a certain age. And I just took those pictures out, put, put them in. And it's very, very interesting because you're not really charged today. You still feel it. And it's almost as if, you know, if you envision a rainbow with so many different layers and colors, yeah. it's as if one of those layers is being charged and you feel that is being charged. There's something going on, but it's not your whole self, if that makes sense. No, I, I totally get it. Uh, if for anyone mm -hmm. who understands German new medicine, uh, or the concept of emotions getting trapped in your body, um, and, you know, and bioelectrically. Um, to release those emotions, you need to inject energy into your system because they're trapped in you. Emotions are energy, and they're trapped in you, obviously. And so you carry around all that baggage. So you're saying that quantum energy has the capability of reaching that, the, you know, those blockages where that, those emotions are trapped. Uh, and and the, and the link is a picture of Definitely. you when that when that moment happened. It's not like time travel, but it's more like you are here now, but you're carrying all this stuff. And the key to that is to reach out to that moment that 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 emotion got locked inside of you, and to get that to that key is is a picture of you as a child, or a picture of you, let's say, twenty years ago, horrible divorce, you know, and you want to get over it now. I get a picture of you back then. So for folks that are suffering PTSD. Get a picture of the moment that you know that of that time frame that you were going through that event. Put that picture in the block. Put in intention, and uh, and seek healing. I think that's 
That is amazing. And you've actually, we've had more than one person then you're saying. Um, yes, there are multiple people actually. Wow. And there are several people that are not even in the group that have reported that and have tested that. And it's, uh, it's really quite interesting. I mean, the, the the concept is really not difficult to understand if you understand how that works and what you just explained is very, very helpful. You know, the time and distance, first of all, doesn't really matter in that concentrated quantum field. And indeed it's about something, you know, you can solve stuff from the past in the now, right? You know, whether you do that with um, um, therapies, right? And you talk about stuff in the now about stuff that happened 20 years ago, and then you're kind of like at some point getting over that, or you're doing a healing work with a shaman, uh, you know, or you know, using uh, this type of uh, energy to to help with that. Yeah, it's absolutely um, possible. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so another question about uh, using the blocks. And I'm going to throw in question number two for for clarification because I was looking at some photos, and it and I saw people who were like who had a Q block or two I blocks, and they were like sitting on a shelf next to each other. And I know that you had said earlier, you know, don't put them next to each other. So could you comment on the proximity of blocks? If you have more than one block, should you keep them separate? And what's the guidance on that? Yes, usually two to three meters minimum distance. There are exceptions, but those are a little bit complicated and they cannot be generalized. So two to three meters minimum is what we recommend. Also, usually if you have a home, right, and you have two or three of these, then you have a much better energy flow if you put them in different spots. Yeah, that's how I do it. And and the, the, the yeah, I mean, there's not more to say. So two to three meters okay. minimum is what you should. Yeah. So do not put them on a shelf next to each other. They inter no. so they actually will inter they're, they're, they're interfere with each other if they're that close to each other, right? Yes. So and and they they may not function properly. Okay. Okay. Um, now now there's a a lot of questions about intentions, um, and so for the longest time, you know, there's a recommendation to. Uh, you know, write down what you what you want to send into the you know universe, and people could also call it prayer. But putting down on a piece of paper or saying it out loud while charging something or charging, you know, putting in a photo. So you know, the the question is is I guess the the number one is like people who've never done that before. Uh, and I, the question I believe comes up where it says, "Do I? How do I? You know, like you know, I guess I'll just summarize." How do I phrase an, an intention? So what would you recommend? Like, how do I phrase an intention? Let's say, you know, as an example, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, um, you know, I, I, I want to lose weight or um, I, you know, I want uh, past emotional trauma to be healed. How would I phrase that and put it on a piece of paper? And yeah, so first of all, the, the, fir the first thing to, to keep in mind is that it should not be anything that's manipulative um and or you know harmful and destructive i mean that would kind of be neutralized anyway but it's just something just keep that in mind like you don't want yeah especially if it's about other people uh, possibly right so then placing an intention in so if i want to lose weight um then i would use the present form um i lose five pounds within two weeks whereas the the timing sometimes can be very difficult and it may may be a burden for the intention um so you could also do something like um it is very easy for me to lose weight in the next few weeks you know that leaves more room and space for possibilities and how it happens um feels even a little easier and Anytime you write down an intention, try to envision what you're writing down, you know, literally like with, with an inner picture almost and a feeling ideally, and you're putting that in. And then it gets amplified just by that, but it's a more complete intention in that moment because of that, because you're not, it's not just a words, you know, it's not 
energy less words it's it's really complete you're putting it into the infinity block or the quantum block and then from there it gets amplified it's as an information and a signal in the field uh, and it gets supported pretty much 24 7 as long as it is in there okay so yeah that makes be sense. specific i guess is the key right yeah try to be specific. be specific and then you know sometimes people wonder also okay so how can i heal the word how what I, can i do for the world right sometimes there are things that you know we want in the world to change there i would you know try to maybe not be specific with these things like if someone wants joe biden to not be there anymore that that's kind of like goes into more manipulation of that and um so i i would rather then tune in and see okay so what are the aspects that would be wonderful to have here that are also not manipulative so you know based on the current time and, and where we're moving in as humanity something like more peace more more loving connections you know things like that are amazing and and those get supported and it's just you know people sometimes wonder you know what can i do is but hey if we put out and radiate out this intention and here we can have a tool that can help do that and we don't have to constantly repeat this intention right that that's that's something you know it's it, it it is an information that's then given in the field and it does have impact okay no that's that's good that's good to know all right so everybody go out there and try it and see what happens uh number four care and maintenance i mean is there anything special people need to know about keeping their blocks clean um like making sure the dog hair doesn't accumulate inside of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it's, it's just soap I, and water. I mean, you can't hurt the thing, right? It's metal, but you should keep it clean so that it doesn't have, I mean, what do you, what, what's your recommendation on care and maintenance? Yep. So what we found is actually that these microfiber cloths that you would use for um, wine glass cleaning, those are the best. Oh, okay. And and they're very cheap. You can get them on Amazon and many other places. Probably, I actually posted about that yesterday in the group. And and if you on a regular basis just wipe down the dust, uh, that's great. And uh, even with the Infinity Block, you know, you could every now and then maybe you know we're in between the plates. It's kind of like difficult to to get in. But with one of those cloths, you may be able to. You can take a maybe a pencil or something else, maybe a knife, and just stick a part of that through, and then just uh, pull it from the other end. If, if if you guys understand what I'm talking about, and with that you don't even need water usually, because you just wipe it real quick. And you know we do that once a week, just to keep it keep it a little bit clean from dust and um, possibly other things. And yeah, I mean, if you if you charged your foods in there and, and you had a soup and it spilled over, obviously, and you know, then then maybe you, you need to use a little uh, water with it. But yeah, that's that's what I would do. I would not be overly concerned about it. But it's it's just nice to keep it clean and, and some dust buildup. Um, yeah, isn't that great? They, it's it's just works better if you don't have a lot of dust in there. Okay, all right. No, good, good to know. Uh, the other, you know, you see this question all the time about people asking, you know, about traveling with the blocks. Does it, you know, is it just uh, better to disassemble it and then just put it in your suitcase? Or is there any issue about having it assembled and while you're traveling, uh, planes, trains, automobiles? Yeah, so I can maybe um, say how I do it or we sure. do it. And we also have some good news. So if we travel in the car, you know, uh, then on a longer trip, then we usually actually have a block with us and have it in the back, you know, in a way where, you know, it doesn't fall over. If we travel with a plane, um, then usually we disassemble and then put it together where we're at. That's, uh, that's how we do it. Then someone in the group had a great idea and found a, a bag a nice pretty stable bag that had pretty much the dimensions of the blocks that you could put inside and ask hey you know well, could we make a um, bag like that so we've actually exploring based on that great input and we've found a company that can 
produce these. So we're still in the process of that, but you know, maybe that, that will still be a black bag, but it may have the, uh, the gold mandala on it, you know, something just that it looks nice. It, it wouldn't show Lila quantum tech because we, we don't want to like brand this, you know, it shouldn't be like a walk-in commercial. It just should look nice and be very functional. So, and with that, it's actually a lot easier because you can put it in your car like that. You could, you could possibly even then uh, take it into the, the plane. Now, I don't know what the security would say about that, but you know, what problem would they have with that, frankly, is probably, probably none. So yeah, that's another way to okay. do it. And yeah, maybe we'll have this, these smaller blocks at some point also that, you know, we've been asked about, you have the prototype, uh, okay. And we're, we're, we're trying to make them one centimeter larger, just so that it's a little bit easier to put even big fists in there and to put a little glass in there. But those are actually pretty cool for traveling because you can literally have them in your purse. You know, if you're, um, you're a female and you, it's very easy in the car, you know, it's, it's just, it's pretty convenient for, for traveling, frankly. Yeah, I like my QB Mini. I love it. I really do. And you'll, yeah, you you hit on the you hit on the issue, right? It's if it was just a little bit bigger, so I could put a coffee cup in there. If it was just the perfect size to for a coffee cup, that would be perfect. Uh, <laughs> you know, I do that every single morning. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I keep it in the truck. I lo I love it. It's just great. Thank you. Okay, so traveling with blocks, so you've never had any issues with TSA, right? I mean, it's like pretty much disassemble it if you're traveling because it is you know large but no issues right just okay no to no issues and whatsoever and the little the mini block actually a crew my wife she had um the the mini block just you know in in her purse you know with her and uh, yeah no no problem whatsoever i mean you know it's not a knife it's not a gun it's you know it's just a little nice looking object for people and you know if you're asked what that is well you know it's just a very nice little golden temple or design piece, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a book, I, or I'd say it's like a bookcase or something like that. Right? Okay. Um, now let's talk about uh, number six is the, um, now this question comes up a lot, right? It's like, is there a difference between the plates on a QB versus an IB? Meaning, yes. you know, the uh, infinity block is three plates up and down, right? So a total of six plates. And the question comes up is like, well, if it's too much energy for me, uh, can I take a plate off the top and the bottom and only use two? Or the other question is, is if I have an infinity block, I got three plates, could I just make three QBs out of one IB? You know, those kinds of <laughs> questions, right? Because, you know, because yeah. in a, in a, so the question I always tell everybody is like, no, you can't because it's like they're charged differently. And so, but if, you know, you could elaborate on that, like, like why is, does, why wouldn't that work? I guess is the question. Yeah, it, it's because of the quantum consciousness levels mainly and uh, an infinity block um, once put together, then uh, that's how it operates. And you can then not remove plates and then just have a quantum block. It's just, it, it just doesn't work that way. Um, it's uh, because it's a, yeah, it's a different, different level of charge, different level of quantum consciousness levels. And yeah, it just doesn't work that way. And by the way, also, um, never, you can make it you can make it less strong, a little bit less strong that way in the beginning. But for example, also if you use just two plates on the top and two plates on the bottom, we would never recommend that because that is not it. It doesn't work well for whatever reason. We we tested that uh, very early on. Um, so yeah, so if you want to use a quantum block for the specific functions of a quantum block you yeah you, you should get a quantum block okay so it just simply doesn't work that way okay uh, good to know um so the other question number seven is um you know this this kind this came up and it was an interesting question it's like hey you know i always wear a heel capsule around my neck and i'm sitting there putting stuff in my my block does the proximity of me having one layla device around my neck affect anything uh in the block as i'm charging and vice versa so you know should i you know it should should people you know kind of keep these things away from each other or or, or it doesn't matter 
No, it does not matter. There's okay. no problem with that. So it wouldn't affect the block at all uh, on, on one side. And the flip side is the, the block would not like charge an already charged object, if that makes sense. So the okay. distant charging of, of objects is yes, you get quantum energy in it. Uh, and yes, you neutralize uh, any and all harmful and negative frequencies with it, as I've explained, I think in part one with this, you know, big dining table that we had bought, which is an antique dining table. And, you know, we had just had to get those energies out there uh, that were stuck in there. And, and that's very easy done with a photo. However, if you have a, a heel capsule that's already charged and, you know, there's, there's nothing that you do with that. You would then have to physically put it into a higher level infinity block yeah. uh, in order for it to have a change. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. So the other question that comes up a lot is the topping off concept where, um, as, as I understand uh, that the Layla products, when you, when you make them uh, for the website that you put the frequency, use a Q, you know, like we should, it's a highly recommended, right? Use your Q block whenever you're copying frequencies. And then, so you'll give it a full QB charge and then you'll quote, top it off and put it in the IB. Uh, in the infinity block. And that's kind of for the concept that an infinity block is seven times stronger than uh, a Q block. And so there's that idea that, you know, you use both. So first question is, is, is it required to use both? If I only have a QB, uh, you know, if I want to have, if I want to make a device, let's say I want to make my own capsules and I only have a QB and I go to the full three minutes, is it going to, is it not the same as like if I bought a capsule from, from Layla Q? because you also mm -hmm. give it a you top it off and and they won't be able to yeah no it would be as definitely not as strong okay uh if you just have a quantum block but however it's still it, it will still work of course right it's right, just right. the the vibration still, isn't as object. high yeah. yeah so so and if you have an infinity block then definitely top it um off if if you feel like wanting that a uh, higher vibration I would say it's not, if you have both the quantum block and the infinity block to simply put pure quantum energy into an object, you can put it in right away in the infinity block. There's no need to put it in the quantum block beforehand. But if you work with frequencies, you know, we charge and copy any and all frequencies only in a quantum block type device um, and not in the infinity block because of multiple reasons that we already talked about, you know, handling frequencies is way easier uh, in the quantum block. Then we top it off in the infinity block. But again, if you just want to charge pure quantum energy into your watch, you know, you could go straight to the infinity yeah. block because yeah. So they're giving this. So that's a really important point is that if you just have a quantum block, you're perfectly fine because you've created a very, uh, you know, powerful QE device like capsule or card um, that has the frequency or has the energy and you're fine. Uh, there's no need to have both. I think that's the key thing because, and then for, uh, for Layla, you, you actually do this topping off process because you have at your disposal and you want your, 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 you know, I'm, I'm just assuming, I'm just saying this personally, but you basically, you want to have uh, your devices are stronger than, uh, you want them as strong as you can get them, right? And, and when you when you when you provide them to customers, is that correct? Yes, and you know the infinity block then comes in handy also for other people. Obviously, if they just want to have a stronger field at home, or if they have objects, silverware, whatever that they want to charge with, charge with a higher vibration, then that's where you need or want an infinity block. But if none of that matters, you're totally good with the quantum block. Okay. Yeah, because I had a quantum block for months before I ever had an infinity block, and it was just fine. Okay, um, now for timings, here's the other issue here, right? People are, um, we've talked about upgrading infinity blocks in part one, and people are, some folks are really going for it, you know? And, and so what I wanted to talk about is not necessarily what happens when you do that. I think that's a whole separate question, but uh, it is possible to upgrade. There's a video on the Layla Q YouTube channel, how to do it. But the whole idea though, is that, you know, all of these timings that we've, we've documented here in the tutorial on charging objects, charging uh, people, pets, you know, people and pets, charging food and water. But one of the things about 
what happens and and what you know i don't even know what the recommendation is but like what would you say to people that say hey you know i've i've charged my upgraded my infinity block to level 4 now and i got a 3 and a 4 you know how long should i charge you know, xyz for and it, and so my response to these questions are is like we have no idea you know but then, <laughs> then then the response is well doesn't layla do topping off so wouldn't they know right that there's some kind of a timing for an IB5 versus an IB6. And so, you know, what, what would be your response to that? Because we want to try to help people. Um, yeah. But there's so much that's unknown. Like, like I personally am at IB8, and I know that no one could even possibly tell me how long I could put a cup of coffee in an IB8. <laughs> you know, like yeah. what, you know, half a second, you know what I mean? So that kind of stuff, right? So what, what, do you, what do you say to that? Yeah, so the whole thing is not really linear. So we found that with Infinity Block 1, 2, and 3, you can pretty much use the same timings okay. that, that we that we give you. Uh, with, with metals, I would start being a little bit more cautious um, and maybe have, you know, starting with an Infinity Block 3, not charge metals for more than two minutes. Um, um maybe two and a half minutes and then as you get to four five six i would uh, further reduce that and, and and try to really really not go over two minutes at all um with with metals but charging times for water and all of that and the minimum charging times you know you can just reduce it a little bit maybe cut it into half but i wouldn't for example do anything below 10 seconds still in an infinity block because there just needs to be a little bit of time that the the physical object really is without any movement in there you know if you just you know people ask you know if i um if i have a ring and i'll just you know put something in there real quick and then take my hand out that that's not charging the ring uh, because you know that that really doesn't have much of okay. an effect so you would have to have something in there stable just for a moment at least so so it doesn't mean that you should just charge things now for one second so uh, i don't know maybe that would even be possible but it, yeah I, I would i would not worry too much about that i would keep worrying about metals just keep that in mind just try to reduce it we honestly really can't tell you exactly um, if you have an IB7 or you, in this case, with an 8, um, you just need to follow your own intuition. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's, no, that's what I was thinking. I just Because I know you don't have one of every single one and then sit there and test that one to death and then go to the next one. And, you know, there's just no time for that. So it's just a matter of intuitively. But it's good to know that it's not linear. So even if I have an 8, if I wanted to use it to top off, let's say I make something and I want to top off, 10 seconds, right? And I should be good because that'd be like, treat it like any other IB. But the key is don't leave it in there for like two days or something. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you can, and you can put it in, in, in the eight, I'm sure for 30 to 40, 45 seconds to top something off. And it, and that, that may be great and fantastic, frankly, and it yeah. may be better than just 10 seconds. You just want to make sure that the metal you're topping off hasn't been at the edge of overcharging already and then you're absolutely good to go like again it's yeah and the okay. three minutes that we always talk about is also on the cautious side right because we know sometimes people then run over and then they're at four and okay then you know so we we were a little bit on the cautious side and it's still something to keep in mind though okay all right Okay, so you know we're coming up on the top of the hour, and I cannot believe how fast our conversation. Let's keep going goes. a little bit more. Let's, yeah, uh, so let's, let's, yeah, let's fine with... yeah, so if if you don't mind, let's go ahead and finish the last piece of the charging questions, and then we'll get into the frequency. At where... I'm sorry, you have time for a part three <laughs> to do. Yeah, the let's frequency. do a part three. Like I can't even. I, well, there's no right. way. You know, it's like if you look at yeah. the slides here, guys. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to frequency copying, but but because there's so many questions coming in about just charging uh but let's if you want let's go ahead and finish these last three slides on charging yep. uh i don't think we can even get into emf but then let's do a part three and and i think that would be a really good tutorial right one part yep. one two three how to use blocks because it's a lot more than you could cover in literally in one or two hours but all right so just want to throw that out there um okay so the the next the next the next question i got three slides about separating the plates 
So one of the things I do want to make sure in this tutorial that if you that if you have a block and you're going to charge something so big, you got to take the rods off. What's important? And so, you know, so the high idea though is that you have to keep the plates aligned. Correct, Philip? It's because if you have the plates that are not aligned like this diagram right here, what happens is is the charging space is only where the where the where the plates align. So you've then decreased the space by which you're charging. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. But I want to tell people also, you know, you don't have to worry about like, you know, half an inch of change or something like that, because the energy will find its way to the other um, half of the block. So it's, it's okay if it's not, you know, you don't have to, it's, it doesn't need to be perfectly aligned, right? If it's a little okay. off, you're Let good. Go There's no worry. Right, but I'm yeah, gonna... don't be fully off, you know, like yeah, maybe okay. your picture really shows it like completely off. So that's not the best way to do it. Right. So maybe. if it's off by just a little bit, it's okay. If yeah. you know, so this would still work, uh, but it couldn't be where you're like way up here and this one's way down here. That just would not work. Right. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't work that great. Indeed. Okay. All right. So that's good to know. So everybody, when you separate your plates and then from a standpoint of distance, I know that the Q block the f you you don't want to exceed what 15 feet right five meters is that or, or yeah i i think that's what we tested um what is that yeah it's about 13 14 15 feet uh you don't want to extend that and with the infinity block i would i would say you can probably go up to six meters at least but maybe you just want to keep it at five meters too we honestly haven't tested anything larger than than five meters um so I'm, okay. my my guess that it would not be a problem but i just don't know okay so just say recommended max distance is going to be 15 feet for both uh just as a as a precaution just so that you know it's what we know i guess is right Okay, so that's yes. important to know, everybody, is, you know, 15 feet, which is big enough to, I mean, it's far enough apart where you could charge a car, uh, not, not like, you know, not vertically or not lengthwise, but sideways. Okay, so then the idea here, so I just wanted and to... By the way, in yeah. regards to a car, if you want to charge a car, put a picture of your car uh -huh. uh, in the block and see what it does. It's pretty cool. You oh, know, it, that's it, again, it's, it's not as if you're doing the physical charging, but you get stuff out there energies okay. out there from the production process and stuff like that right. and it's 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 nice it's really nice oh so okay that i totally forgot about that you're right okay so yeah instead of going through the hassle of trying to physically charge your car or your house or your office put a picture of it there you go okay so uh, i pulled some picture out i pulled some photos out of the chat I uh, just wanted to share what people are doing so that, you know, because the, the only problem with TG or Telegram is that, you know, you anytime you post anything, it's gone in five minutes, right? So uh, so I wanted to share some stuff, which is like, this is one of my favorite photos. Uh, one of the, I think it was Desiree uh, and her dogs, and it's so cute, but she's got her dogs here and you see how she's got her two plates and they're vertically, you know, they're, they're aligned and then they just got the dog sitting there. So that's one way to do it. We had another individual post uh, this picture right here where they built some kind of uh, PVC pipe contraption uh, by their window. And they've got a plate down here and then right above it, which is aligned, right? They've got their other plate and they go in there. It's like a little like little shower or a little closet. And it's their charging station for a full body charge. So, so that's one way to keeping the plates aligned and then separating them. Uh, other pictures are people who have, you know, customized their own rods to give them more space and then charging their bodies horizontally like this. Uh, which is putting two rods on one, you know, on one side. Other folks are just taking off one, one plate, you know, here you go, leaning against the pillow and the other one's on the coffee table and they just sit there, uh, you know, and then so we've got these pictures as well. I think the key thing to, to, to note is when you separate the plates on an IB is you need to maintain and keep these uh, nuts in between. You need a space between the plates, correct, Philip? Yes, that's absolutely correct. And this was a very smart one here with, uh, you know, the, uh, how do you call it? The zip? Yeah, the zip ties. Well, zip ties, exactly. And so some people do it like that. And then someone asked, hey, could you produce a screw that basically would cover this this area and would make things easier? And we're actually producing 
uh, the first batch of those currently. So we'll, we'll have those hopefully soon. And yeah, that, that should make it a little bit easier really to, to do this. Okay, perfect. So uh, um, until those, uh, those new, so it's going to be a bolt that'll hold the, the three together without a rod, right? Yes. Okay, so so the easiest way to do it right now is to use a zip tie on one end, leave the leave the rods on the other side, and so you have two rods on one uh ra you know, on, on one plate and two rods on the other plate to kind of like, you know, hold them up. Um and then using zip ties. And so that way you can kind of put it on two different you know, here's an example of, you know, someone who put it on two uh, stools and then they sit in between them. You know, so these are examples yeah. of how to separate the plates to charge, physically charge. Uh, larger objects that don't fit into the eight centimeter space or eight, I think it was eight, right? Or 16 centimeter yeah. space in between. So there you go. So that's how you would separate the plates uh, and you know what, what people are doing and it works. Okay. So we're going to wrap yeah, this and, up. because Thanks to everyone, by the way, for being so creative and also sharing these pictures and how you do things. It's valuable. It's fun. Um, and, and for everyone, you know, everyone gets inspired by that. So keep doing that. Please. Yeah. Yeah. That's keep really sharing. Awesome. Please, please, please. So anyway, I know Philip's got to run. So we're going to wrap up part two. Mahalo. Thank you so much for your time. I think, you know, these tutorials are, are going to be invaluable. And anytime someone buys a block or before you even buy one, you know, watch these tutorials because we're going to go into a part three where we're going to talk about, uh, well, we're going to get into EMF and talk about frequencies and so forth or how to you know, copy frequencies and get really in depth about that uh, in part three. Sorry, sorry, we couldn't cover it now. But as you just listened, uh, there's so much content and it's so valuable. I don't want to skip anything. So thanks a lot for your time, Philip. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, now, for anyone who wants to uh, get a hold of us, you know, we do have the Quantum Power Group on Telegram. It's our private group uh, and the joint link will be in the video comments below. Uh, we've got over 2,500 members now in our group, jumping in, sharing, asking questions, helping each other out. It's like one of the best communities I've ever been on and when it relates to social media. It's just, it's an amazing group of people. A lot of love, a lot of, lot of aloha. And then for me, I'm at the Tinkers Academy. If you want to reach out, I've got a lot of content on quantum energy um, and a lot of uh, information uh, about Layla specifically. So come over to Tinkers Academy, link below. If you want to get hold of me and if you want to get hold of Philip, just pop over to Telegram at the Quantum Power Group. So that's how you reach us. Otherwise, you know, Philip, thank you so much for your time this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kay. This was great. And thanks, everyone listening. Looking forward to part three. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Aloha.